Stephen, very welcome in our sunny Finland. It's a pleasure to have you uh, with me because you're a very good friend, but also with us because you are one of the founder of what we call incentive regulation in Europe and, and worldwide. So roughly we are at the 30th birthday of incentive regulation, but better to call it RPI minus X and to remember to everyone that you did think about this and create this when you were an uh, economist at the Royal Treasury. But what does it mean and why it has been so influential? Well, the main aim in the early 1980s was to privatize industries, in particular British Telecom. So how do you ensure that you can sell what had previously been a nationalized industry? The answer was you had to reassure investors and you had to reassure customers. And you needed something simple that both sets of those parties would understand. And the point about RPX, RPI minus X, was to link the price that British Telecom was allowed to charge to the retail price index, in other words, to the rate of inflation. Everybody could understand that, and the company and the shareholders wanted protection against inflation. And we said RPI minus X means the price will go down in real terms. So customers will be better off and shareholders will know what they're in for. It means that customers know prices will go down and the shareholders also know what prices they will be allowed to charge by the regulator. So that was the first thing. The second important concept was we wanted to provide an incentive for this new private company to be more efficient than the nationalized industry, to get its prices down. If we went for the American system of rate of return regulation, that seemed to imply that if they put their prices down, their costs down, their prices would have to go down immediately. There would be no benefit to the company. So we said, guarantee them a fixed price for four years If they can reduce their costs below that, they can keep the difference. That will increase the incentive to be efficient and that benefit can then be passed on to customers. It's very clear why it was an excellent idea and why it has been so popular. But as academic, you have not been only popular. You did implement your own idea. You have been the first uh, electricity regulator in UK and maybe in the whole Europe and for eight years, so you did implement your own system. Was it beneficial? Did it deliver what you said just before implementing it? Yes, I was able to observe it in action in most of the privatized industries before I became regulator in the electricity industry. As you say, it became popular. Uh, not only throughout Britain, but in many other countries, because it was simple, because it provided reassurance, and because it provided incentives to be efficient. And we saw the evidence of that. The costs of these privatized industries steadily came down, often by significant amounts. In the electricity industry that I was uh, concerned with regulating, uh, within a year or two after I finished regulating, the number of employees in that industry was about one third of what it was before privatization, yet the output was greater. So the efficiency improvements were significant. But what I also found was that it was difficult to set that price control because it was difficult to work out what was the correct level of X. It took rather than a few weeks, as it did at the time of privatization, It took at least a year. After my time, it began to take two years, even three years, to set a value of X for a price control. And that was three years of intensive discussion, argument, production of evidence, evaluation of evidence. Very stressful period for the companies and the regulators. A period of uncertainty where investors didn't know what was going to happen. So that was one of the problems. The second problem was that the regulator was required to approve or propose an investment plan. Well, regulators really don't know 
what ought to be the investment program of a company. So there was a great increasing amount of uncertainty as to what the regulator would decide, did the regulator really understand what customers want, and should the regulator impose the same solution on all these companies. So on the one hand, very significant advantages in terms of efficiency improvements, on the other hand, it became increasingly difficult and challenging to set these price controls. So the idea has been very influential, the implementation very successful, so that's a complete rosy picture, and that's a revolution which works. But today we are 30 years after the invention of the concept, 23 years after the beginning of the UK liberalization, does it still work? Your successor, the new UK regulator for energy, is roughly saying RPI minus six was conceived to deal with the fat cats being the state monopolies, but today it's, it's not the priority. The priority is to push for a wave of investment and a wave of innovation. How do you feel with this new trend? I think broadly speaking that's a sensible assessment by today's regulator. The nature of the main problem has changed. It's no longer a problem of inefficiency, it's more a question of what should the new investment plan be. And in order to decide that the regulator needs to know what customers will want in the future. Now that is a very different kind of challenge and so I think that the concept of incentives to meet customer demand has been retained. But the question then is, what is the customer demand going to be? And what the regulator has done in addition is to encourage the notion of customer engagement so that the regulated companies have to talk to their customers to understand what the customers want Jointly they will do research to find out what other customers want. Together they will evaluate the possible investment plans for doing that. And the regulator is saying, if this customer engagement program is done thoroughly and in a way that we can see benefits customers, we will be prepared to uh, basically approve the company's plan reflecting customers' wishes. If the company's not able to agree with the customers, then we shall have to take our own decision. So it's a complex direction of movement, but I think it involves more use of customers, and to me that's a good thing. Thank you very much, Stephen. You are showing to our audience that economists, at least some economists, can be socially responsible, innovative and sensible. Thank you very much. Thank you to you.